Blues. Uh, welcome back to another video and today we are going to learn about alkanes, the family alkanes. And they um, have a surname that ends with ain. Okay, so this is a special family because they're pretty simple. They are a, a family that we can um, recognize and identify by ha looking at only the C's that are bonded together and having H's bonded to them. So that is the plain, plain molecule. Even with a branch chain, if there's no other groups other than C's and H's, we call them uh, an al alkanes and their molecules will end in an aim. Um, we call this molecule, because all the carbons are bonded to H's, we call this a saturated molecule. So a saturated um, means it's full, so all the carbons bonds that could possibly form has been taken. So carbons are filled, they're saturated molecules, which makes them quite hard to um, react with other substances. So if we look at melting and boiling points as well, uh, from now on in all the groups, we look at the forces that's holding those molecules together to identify whether the melting and boiling point would be high or low. So if we look at this um, alkanes and groups, and we have these molecules, what's happening when we boil or when we melt something is the bonds between, because this attraction between these molecules need to break. So the bonds need to break um, in order for them to separate further and become a gas. So if we have strong forces between these molecules, holding the molecules together or att attracting these molecules, they will be really hard to break, which means that we need a very high melting and boiling point to break these. In this case, if we look at these ones, the only forces that's between them are weak forces between the carbons and the hydrogens. There's no stronger forces involved um, except for electrostatic uh, attraction, which is the basic and the most the simplest form of attraction. So these uh, forces between the molecules are very, very weak. So therefore we can say that the melting point and the boiling point of these molecules, of the alkanes, are low. Another thing that we need to talk about around the properties of an alkane is its solubility, whether it dissolves in water. And the way that we can identify this, and again, for all the other substances um, that we'll cover, or all the other groups that we'll cover, you, we use the same principle of polarity. So polarity is a whole top unit or a topic on its own, but I'm going to quickly touch on that. So solubility, if we have a molecule that looks like this, um, and a molecule that looks like this, and an OH at the end, or an O at the end, um, this one will be polar compared to that one, or more polar compared to that one. Because when you look at the periodic table, um, and you, you work your way from the left-hand side all the way to F, F is the most greedy, and we call polarity like the greediness. So if we have a greedy molecule, like an F, so anything closer to the F, will be more greedy compared to the other, the left-hand side of the, the um, periodic table. So this one, O, will be more greedy. So it will try and pull all the electrons from these carbons towards itself. So if this carbon has electrons got spinning around it, and this carbon has electrons spinning around it, what's going to happen now is most of the electrons are going to try and move towards the O because it's the greedy one. So it's kind of like trying to steal the electrons from these carbons. So this side, because electrons are negative, this side of the molecule is going to kind of have a little um, charge, a negative charge, because most electrons on, uh, will be on that side of the molecule, which means that this side would be positive. In an alkane, because there's no extra greedy molecules um, or atoms, all these atoms are pretty similar and they have a similar attraction, they kind of share the electrons between them equally. So there's no definite positive and negative side to it. So we call this a non-polar. Okay, so in chemistry what's happening, uh, the way that we judge something to be soluble um, is a little antidote that we say like dissolves like. So if we have a polar liquid 
and we put something that's polar in it, it will dissolve. If we have a non-polar, something that doesn't have a, a, a definite pole, and we put a molecule that has doesn't have a definite pole that's non-polar, if we put them together, they'll dissolve. But if we have a liquid that's polar and we put something in there that's non-polar, they, well, they won't mix, so they won't dissolve. And so, um, so we need to find out what is water. So let's have a look and we apply the same principle of polarity to the water molecule. So if we have a mo water molecule uh, that has an O and it has two H's. So if we look at this and we compare the left hand side and right hand side um, atoms on the periodic table, we know that the hydrogens are all on the left hand side and oxygen is more on this side and it's closer to the F to fluorine, which is the most greedy one. So that means compared to these two, this one will be much more greedy to, compared to the H's. So this will try and steal all the electrons and move, attract all the electrons to its side. So this side is going to be negative and then that side of the molecule will be positive because most electrons will be around the oxygen. Okay, so now we know because there's a definite positive and negative side of a water molecule, we know that this one is polar. Okay, so anything that's polar that we put into water will dissolve because like dissolves like. So if we look at an alkane, remember we said an alkane, uh, it looks like this, it doesn't, it only has H's around it. There's no definite ch difference between the C's um, or the one side and the other side of the molecule. So this one is non-polar and because this one is non-polar, and water is polar, remember only like dissolves like, this means that it won't dissolve. So this alkanes, or all alkanes, are insoluble in water. Right, so if we have uh, this colorless liquid, if, it, if we had it in a liquid, um, how would we know and how do we distinguish this liquid from other colorless liquids? Okay, and this is, um, you'll see with, when we're going through different groups, you'll have a way to test for each group, and it's, it's quite important. So an alkane um, react only, only reacts with bromine water. So if we have an alkene, or an alkane, sorry, if we put it like, if we have a three, so that is propane, if we have three, uh, an alkane, we can test it, with bromine water because bromine water it has an orange color to it. So if we have this colorless liquid and we add a, a, a brown orangey color liquid to it, what's going to happen? Hopefully it changes if it's an alkane, but it also changes when it's an alkene. So we'll get to that. The only way that this is going to change is with UV light. So if we put this one, an alkane, and bromine water together and we put it in sunlight, the UV light's going to change this and what's going to happen is one of these bonds that's bonded to H's, the UV light will be the catalyst and what's going to happen is uh, one of these H's will be pushed out of the alkane or from the alkane, it will be eliminated. So for instance, we're just picking that H and what's going to happen is one of these BRs is going to go in its place, into the H's place. And what's left is because we start with two BRs, we have one BR left and the H that's left. So when that reaction happens, we have a molecule called a halo alkane now, because this is a halogen, so it's a halo alkane. And so a halo alkane plus HBr, because that's what's left. Okay, so that's the only reaction that we have that occurs with alkanes. Because we see an alkane is saturated, all its bonds are taken, so it's really hard to remove or change any of these bonds. And the only thing that changes it is bromine water in the presence of light. So what would we see? We would see a, a colorless liquid and an orange liquid and when we add them together that orange liquid slowly will change under UV conditions to become a colorless so the orange will go colorless and 
uh, colorless gas or a colorless liquid so you'll see orange slowly turning to colorless so this is the test and also the, one of the reactions of an alkane so in summary the alkanes is the first group that we're doing uh, they end in this have the surname aim They've co they're colourless gases or liquids, depending on their size. They have a low mounting and boiling point. They are non-polar because they don't have any greedy atoms attached to it. So it means that it doesn't dissolve in water. So it's insoluble. And then the only reaction that takes place with alkanes is with bromine and UV. And we can use that one reaction that actually happens to test for it. And, and remember, it's in the presence of UV light.